Peter said something about if anybody had any burdens, yes. any problems. Wow. You know, a few not too long ago, Pharaoh Williams wrote this song called Happy. We mm. produced it. We recorded it. And not before, long before that, a person named Bobby McFerrin wrote, Don't worry, be happy. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if it were that simple? <laughs> Don't worry, be happy. No sweat. People want to be happy all the time. And it's difficult because most people aren't happy. And they try almost anything they can to be happy. They'll buy a bigger house, buy a bigger car, new iPad. Some people have an affair. Some people will take alcohol, drugs, anything to try to be happy. <coughs> Unfortunately, that doesn't work. And people who do that may be transiently happy, or they think they are, but whenever it wears away, that happiness disappears like fog and bright sunshine. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. Then they do it again to try to get happy again. You know, it's interesting that Jesus never came to bring happiness. He came to bring joy. Yes. Now, when people are going through things, they aren't happy. When Job was going through all his troubles in the book of Job, I'm sure he wasn't happy. In fact, he was angry. He railed at God. He argued with God. He wanted to confront God. But he did not give up on God. That's why Jesus came to bring joy, not happiness. And joy is a little different. Joy is that deep, relationship or essence that brings happiness. It's that contentment. It's that feeling of security. It's the feeling of everything's going to be all right because you know things are going to be right. Regardless of what you're going through, you can have the joy that comes from knowing Christ. And you can have the joy which states that in the long run, things are going to be better. This is why James has this statement that Consider it all joy, the trials that you're in. Now, when you're going through them, it may be difficult to consider yourself joyful. It's hard to be happy when you're up to your waist in alligators. It just doesn't work. But in the long run, if you know what's ahead of you and know who's with you, there's a joy that can come. It only comes through Christ. It summarized fairly well in a number of places. Because it says in John, in first John, in John the book, the gospel, and in first and second John, that God came the, the, so that our joy would be full. But it summarized probably the best, the way to obtain this in first Corinthians, chapter 15. It says, Paul says this, for I delivered to you first all that I also received. Okay. The gospel which I preached unto you, which you received, wherein you also stand, and by which you are saved. The gospel, the good news, is not something that's awaiting us in the future. It's not something which is coming. It's already been here. It's been done. It's past history. It's completed. It's known. The good news, the gospel, which Paul received because he got it from someone else. He got it from Christ. He got it from the apostles, which he received and which he preached. You get the good news by having it given to you. We all do, and by reading it ourselves, by studying it. Whereon you stand, if you don't know what it is, if 
you don't appreciate what it is, then it's hard to stand on it. Yes. You know, when we're born as children, we have to learn everything. Yes. We have to keep learning. If you're going to have a career, you have to keep learning. If you're going to be a cook, you have to learn how to cook. <laughs> if you're going to be a carpenter, you have to learn how to be a carpenter. If you're going to be a nurse, you have to practice nursing. Nothing comes without study. When you're born again, spiritually, you have to study it. Yes. You have to understand it and get into the Word and study it, or else you'll never stand on it. Mm -hmm. Because that's the reason whereby you're saved. Yes. It's the knowing the where you stand. Mm -hmm. He received it, and he passed it on. Yeah. It's the gospel which was sent down which was established 2,000 years ago. Too many times today, the gospel has been changed. The message has been changed. It has been twisted and distorted so that it's not really the gospel that was sent down to us. But it's the gospel, the true gospel, upon which we stand and by which we are saved. If you hold fast the word which I preached unto you, or else you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That's the essence. We're coming up to Easter. Celebrate, remember Christ's death and resurrection. This is the essence. If this is not preached, if this is not understood, if this is not accepted, then it's all in vain. Right. It says in Hebrews that Christ endured the cross for the joy that lay before him. If we want to receive the same joy and have that joy throughout this life, then it's important that we accept the cross, remember the cross, and remember the sacrifice. Yes. And this Easter, that's probably something we all should think about. Yes.